Hi friends! Today we're going to do my wrap up for the month of January. <laughs> January I read nine books for a total of 3,191 pages which isn't too shabby. As always I will start from the lowest rated and go up to the highest rated and if you want to know any more of my full thoughts I will link all of my reviews on Goodreads and description box down below. I did not have any DNFs in January. I also did not have any rereads in January so we can just start right off with our lowest rated book. And that is going to be Waterfall by Lauren Kate. I rated this a 2.25 out of 5 stars. This is the second book in a duology that follows a girl named Eureka who is part of this what they call a tear line. Basically meaning that the women in her family are never able to cry and if they do cry then their tears will flood the world. I feel like a 2.25 is a fairly generous rating for how I actually felt about this book, mostly because I liked the way that it ended. I feel like the ending was vague. It wasn't a happily ever after for everyone. Uh, there were definitely some some things about it, which, which I like because I like things that don't, you know, tie everything up in a bow, especially in YA. But I feel like this book felt super rushed and unplanned and it read more like a first draft or like an exploratory draft where you were trying to like figure out where things were going to go. It's hard to say like real reasons without like being super spoilery I guess but basically like if you don't want to know further thoughts processes whatever just wait like skip to the next book. Okay uh, basically in the first book everyone dies. That I mean essentially. Uh, <laughs> Eureka cries and so the whole world is flooded and basically uh, the whole world is flooded so a lot of people have died and I just don't feel like even with the majority of the world what do we say 90% of the population I don't feel like anyone really cares that much. It doesn't feel like there's a couple of moments where you can tell that people feel bad but a lot of it really is just like, like the whole world is drowned and everyone's dead. But what we really need to do is stop this king from taking over because we don't want to be ruled by him. I'm like, everyone's dead. Like, do you not care that everyone is dead? All of the parents die and just like everyone's fucking dead and they don't care. And it's so weird to me that they just don't care that everyone's dead. Like everyone's dead. The ending is is a little weird. I mean as far as like everyone comes back to life ish. Like I don't understand the concept behind Eureka loses her body and Brooks loses his body and everyone else is dead but they everyone else is able to come back to life but Eureka and Brooks can't come back to life. As I said a 2.25 is rather generous. Next is the graphic novel Moonstruck by Grace Ellis. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This graphic novel I'm fairly certain is about a girl who is like a werewolf and there's someone taking powers from her friends and turning them human and so it's kind of like a revenge story of them getting people's powers back I think. Look the art was beautiful. The diversity was great. Plot was pretty meh. I didn't love the main character and her love interest was an absolute dick. Like people talk about how much they love the relationship in this and how cute it is and I'm like this is toxic as fuck. Her girlfriend is a complete bitch to her, treats her like trash, talks down to her, um, calls her weak and just basically trash talks her for 75% of this comic and for some reason it's a glorious ration. They're so cute. No they ain't. The thought behind like oh well but I love you. I'm like you've been on a date like maybe two dates, maybe two dates. And they're like, well, I know that she said this mean thing, but I love her and I'm willing to forgive her. Like, bitch, you better run now while you still can. Total points for the artwork and the diversity. The plot was a little here, there, everywhere. And the love interest was a fucking shit show. So there's that. Next, I have Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. I gave this a three out of five stars. This book follows Laszlo Strange who has 
he's a librarian or an assistant librarian of sorts. Basically he likes to archive fairy tales and he likes this specific place called Weep and he has always been trying to prove of its existence. When he was a child he knew Weep was real and everyone around him knew that Weep was real but there was a specific day where Weep was basically struck from their records and so everyone basically is telling him that Weep isn't real and we don't know what you're talking about and he's like but no it's real and so one day there is a uh, a group of people who say they're from Weep that show up in Laszlo's town and they're like hey you should come with us and so he goes off on an adventure and I can't tell you much more than that otherwise it's full of spoilers. We all know that flowery writing is not my jam. I knew that going in, like I knew that this was a very flowery book and I know that that's not my thing. And so I, I went in going, I expect to not love this, but I think I will like it. And I did. I, I didn't love the writing style, but that's my preferred. I, the characters were okay. They weren't like the best characters I've ever, you know, seen in my life but they were okay. It was hard to get into and I feel like there's a point of view change uh, fairly early on, like maybe a third into the book. And I felt like once I like I had finally gotten settled into Laszlo's world and like the, into his personality. And the second I got settled into Laszlo's point of view, it changed point of views and I was back to having no clue what the fuck was going on. And so then I was back in that like I have no clue what's going on. I have no clue what's happening. I do like where things ended. Like the ending was both unpredictable though predictable uh, because of the prologue and also like I like the way it ended because I'm like I like the love story despite the fact that I don't love the characters. I do like the love story and I like kind of where things went. I, I enjoyed the romance and I enjoyed kind of where things ended. I love the world building. The world building is fantastic and um, I don't want to talk too much about my thoughts and feelings uh, because this was the AuthorTube Chat Book Club pick for January, February. So Kate and I will be having a live show for this book on my channel um, on the 16th. I believe of February, Wednesday. I will put the date. The date should be down below um, under uh, upcoming live streams. So uh, the date should be down there. And so Kate and I will be discussing this book and then announcing the next book. So uh, I don't want to go too full into my thoughts. But basically, I liked it. It was okay. I will read the sequel um, because I do want to know how things end. So interestingly, Kate is not a prologue reader. She doesn't like to read prologues. So we're doing an experiment on um, having her not read the prologue because I read the prologue and see how that affects the knowing what's going to happen because I feel like the prologue is way spoilery. So we're, we're doing an experiment as well. Next we have two books, Other Earth and Other Life by Jason Siegel and Kirsten Miller. Um, I rated these the same. I gave them both 3.75 out of 5 stars so I figured I might as well talk about them both at the same time. The first book in this series, Other World, follows Simon um who's kind of like a bad kid but not a horrible kid he get, does get into a lot of trouble um he l really likes this video game called other world or other earth or other it's i think the game's called other world and i read it three years ago so like forgive me uh <laughs> basically it follows him like realizing that it's it's a virtual reality game and there's things about it that aren't all what they seem the company that runs this game are very sketchy and he finds out that they are using humans as experiments basically trying to make it so that you feel everything you feel in the game but if you do that then if you die in the game you die in real life and so it's basically him trying to take down the company um there's a romance between him and um the main his best friend cat and so all of that i really like where the series ended um, as I said, I gave these both a 3.75 out of 5 stars, so I did really enjoy them. Um, I like where the series ended. I love the discussion of technology and whether it is helpful or hurtful. Basically saying that humans, a couple of humans, shouldn't have that much control over something that large. And so I, I, I do like the way that things ended. I do think that as far as technology goes, I think it definitely needs to be like that broader scale of who's allowed to decide what's okay and what's not okay because there's a lot of not okay technology in here. I do, I'm not a huge gamer person, like I, my extent of gaming ends at Mario Kart, 
so a lot of that is lost on me as far as like the MMRPGs I don't really get it so a lot of that is lost on me and I if I did like those I probably would have liked these better but I still liked them fine enough so um, I'm glad to have completed the series it's one series off of the list for the year and and I did enjoy them so I then read You Have a Match by Emma Lord this was an arc that I received from Wednesday Books and I gave it a 4.25 out of 5 stars this book is about basically about a family full of secrets so the book follows uh, our main character who takes a DNA test along with a friend of hers who was adopted. So he's trying to figure out if he has any biological family other than his sister. Him and his sister were adopted together. And as a show of moral support, um, she decides that she will also take a DNA test and, you know, just as like a, you know, morally supporting him. Well, he doesn't get a match, but she does. And it is a full blood sister that is about two years older than her who lives in her town and is kind of an Instagram influencer. And so she meets with the sister and they decide to kind of convince their parents in a way to send them to a summer camp together, which is very parent trap. And it's got a lot of the summer camp vibes. Um, it really is about families and the secrets they have, the secrets they keep, why they keep them. It's got all the summer camp vibes. It's got a lot of found family aspects to it. I cried a lot. It's got a lot of um, like deep personal moments where you see what this family is going through and how they made the decisions that they were going to make. And, and you know, the main character has, I think, three or four younger brothers. So it's, it's weird that her parents would have kept her, but, you know, gotten rid of her older sister who's minusculely older than her. Um, so you kind of find out as the story goes on, like, what, why they made the decisions that they made. And that's, giving up a child for adoption is, like, not, is not an easy decision on anybody's part. Um, it's definitely something that people struggle with and, and have to really think about. So getting into that aspect <laughs> back to it the book was a lot deeper than I thought it was going to be I was expecting like a fun rom-com and while there is a romance in it um a couple of them actually that I really enjoyed it was a lot more family oriented oriented than I had expected I did really enjoy it like I said 4.25 out of 5 stars um very happy with it um emma lord is going to be considered an auto buy author for me from now on i enjoyed tweet cute last year and i do like that in her ya she kind of not only has like an issue going on in the teenagers lives but also um there's always something going on with the parents as well so you get both ends of that and as a 33 year old woman who can relate probably more to the adults than the teenagers i enjoy having ya that has both in it now does that mean that it, i should still be reading YA I don't know that's a whole other conversation for another day we will then jump to makeup breakup by Lily Manon I gave this a 4.5 stars out of five stars a 4.5 out of five stars for five for, 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 for. this was an arc that I received from St. Martin's Griffin this book follows Annika and her best friend June who have this app that is um, called makeup and it basically is to help couples work out their issues, kind of get themselves back together to make up, if you will. And it is her and her rival Hudson. And he has an app called a breakup. And it basically is for people to, um, to break up with people. So two opposite ends of the thing. And you find out that Lily and Hudson kind of had a situationship the previous summer and Annika thinks that Hudson stole her app idea and like perverted it in a way and so it's kind of about uh them fighting for their own apps and trying to um develop their work life as well as figure out how to figure out their situationship relationship life so it's kind of sort of hate to love which is my jam because everything that we see in present day is hate to love. Um, it definitely had a perfect blend of me crying from being happy and me crying from emotional distraught. Um, there's a lot of happy times. There's a lot of darker times. It's very angsty. Um, I loved June. She is amazing. I loved her. Um, Hudson's best friend Ziggy I feel like could have been a little more developed but June was wonderfully developed. I will say that like the ebook edition that I had was really hard to read because it it 
kind of did some head hopping and jumped from one to the other to the other and it was kind of hard to follow but I don't know if that's because it was an arc and an ebook I I don't know for sure because I haven't seen a finished edition so I couldn't tell you here's the thing about this book when I read it I loved it like I really enjoyed it as I said 4.5 out of 5 stars so I really enjoyed it but the more reviews that I'm reading the less I like it and that hurts I'm honestly not sure about my rating I think I think you should take my rating with a grain of salt and if you like hate to love you'll probably enjoy it and it just oh, there are just things there are just things about it that I think back on and I'm like in the moment I didn't think about it in the moment I was like this is amazing I love this and now a couple of weeks later I'm like but this thing happened and like I'm not really okay with that but also I loved it in the moment so I don't know I don't I don't know completely how I feel about it and and that's okay um I did purchase a copy it's just not here yet so I will probably read it again in the future and get a better idea of how I really feel about it but I enjoyed it in the moment I loved it in the moment um there's a lot of really great parts I really loved there's just some situations that I, I didn't love it mm -hmm. Mm, yeah okay moving on we then have Felix Ever After by Casey Callender I give this a 4.75 out of 5 stars this book follows Felix Love who ironically has never been in love and doesn't really know if he deserves to be in love because he is black queer and transgender and he feels like that is too many terms for most people to be able to handle and the book really follows him um figuring out a lot about himself and the people in his life and as I always tell you Felix Ever After is an honest and layered story about identity falling in love and recognizing the love you deserve and this definitely was that I loved this book it was amazing uh, I loved the representation the diversity um, the whole recognizing the love you deserve part absolutely amazing these characters were so well developed they felt like real people like they were amazingly done one of the main themes of the story was that no one can tell you who you are and if you deserve love except for you like you're the only person that has that control over being who you are and if you deserve love or not and I think that is a big theme in here and I really enjoyed that aspect of it I think that any teenager regardless of how they identify will be able to find things in here that will make them feel good about themselves um, me as a 33 year old straight white cisgendered woman found things in here that made me feel good about myself so there's that there's there's a lot of things in here that I really really loved I, I liked the romance I did not see the romance coming it kind of it was like a neon sign and I should have seen it but I didn't see it I did, I did really enjoy this book I, I really really loved it I'm, I'm very happy with it I will be reading more from Kaysen in the future because it was awesome. And then the last book that we're going to talk about today, Legendborn by Tracy Dion. I gave this a 5.25 out of 5 stars. I loved it. <laughs> Clearly. This book follows Brie who is a 16 year old girl who his mother dies very like at the beginning of the book. That's where we start out. It's not a spoiler. Her mom's dead. And she goes into this college learning program where she goes to a school um, that her mom went to when her mom was a teenager and in that discovers that there is like an Arthurian Knights of the Round Table deal secret society of all white people and uh, shit happens. <laughs> My notes say can I love a book more? I can indeed love a book more um, but I did really enjoy this. This was fantastic like I loved the characters I love the diversity um, the romance was fucking just top tier romance the magic system like can we talk about Tracy Dion's magic like this is first off this is a fucking debut like a debut novel and this not only has like a magic system it has a magic system that is multi-layered because different people use the magic system and they all see it differently and it was just done so fucking well so well like I can't I can't imagine having written something like this with this level of detail it it's fucking brilliant basically is where I'm going with that um I loved the characters I love Brie I love Cell I love Nick's okay uh <laughs> 
Nick's okay, but can we get more cell, please? Thank you. Um, Bree's friends are great. The other um, pages and knights and, and all that. It's all, it's all wonderful. Um, I will say that this book, the rating of this book, is like a victim of me just absolutely loving every fucking minute of it because it probably shouldn't have a 5.25. It's not a perfect book. Probably should be more like a 4.75, but I'm sticking with my 5.25 because I fucking loved it. Okay, moving on. Um, I had some issues with the reading as far as like, I kept wondering who this page chick was, except their pages. It's fine. Like, it's just, there's a lot of side characters. There's a lot going on. I get that. It's fine. I fucking loved it. It was amazing. Um, if you like magic, if you like anything about, um, if you like diversity, if you like magic, if you like learning about history, if you like, I don't know, anything, if you like books, you will like this book. Which is not actually true because there I do know people that didn't like this book. Um, but I loved it. And that's the important part because this is my channel. So there's that. I fucking love this book. Cool. Cool. We read this for the Avengers Initiative reading challenge. It was the group book for January. I got this as the Alcrate book. I'm so glad that I read it because I was going to, um, if you remember when I hauled this, I was like, I'm going to put it off for a little while because I'm reading some other Arthurian retellings and I don't want to get my Arthurian retellings mixed up. But then the girls were like, we're going to read this for our group book for January. And I was like, all right, guess I'll read it. I fucking loved it. Oh my gosh, why? I would have put this off for God knows how long. And I loved it. So I think what we've learned here is I should stop putting books off and I should start fucking reading them because they're fucking amazing. Okay, cool. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So these are some of the books that I read in January. Mostly because I just dropped a couple of them on the floor and I'm not picking them up right now. Let me know in the comments below if you have read any of these books and if you have any comments, questions, or concerns. That's gonna be all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week, so if you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!